So once you've used your curve tool to accurately measure your material thickness, we'll use this piece here as an example. So this example piece measures at 0 0.199 inches. So we're gonna take this measurement and we're gonna adjust our drawing to fit that measurement. And this will allow us to get a perfect fit on our joints. So here we are in VCarve Pro, but these same techniques can be used in all of Vetric software, including Cut2D, VCarve, and Aspire. And in this example project, we're going to resize these rectangles to fit another piece of material into, as well as resize these slots on the side of this project to fit a piece of material that we measured with our curve tool. So let's take a look at this rectangle first. So we're gonna zoom in using our scroll wheel, and we're gonna select this rectangle, and we want to resize the height of this rectangle to fit our piece of material into. So to do that, we're gonna go over to our drawing tab, and we want to use this tool here in Transform Objects. It's the second one here. Select that, and that'll open up this set size form. You can also access this by typing the letter T on your keyboard. And in this form, we can set the size that we want this rectangle to be. But first we have to select the anchor point where we want it to anchor from. In this case, we want to keep it in the center of this rectangle. So we want to keep our center point anchored in its position that it's at now. So we're gonna select this center point here on the anchor. And in this case, we do not want to adjust the width. So we're gonna uncheck this box here where it says link X and Y. This will allow us to just change one of these measurements and keep the other one the same where it's at now. So we're gonna come down here to the height and we're gonna change the height here. So we're gonna highlight this and we're gonna type in the measurement that we measured with our curve tool, which was 0 0.199. And now we click apply. And now that it adjusted our rectangle size to exactly the height we entered there. And it kept the width there because we had the X and Y unlinked. And now this rectangle will work perfectly for our project. So we can click close here. So that's all we have to do for a rectangle. Now let's take a look at these slots over here. So we're gonna zoom in up over here. Now these slots require a little bit more work because they are attached to this outer shape. So the first thing we have to do is detach these then we have to resize these, and then we have to reattach them to the outer shape. So to do this, we're going to select our shape, and we want to go into the node editing mode. So you can either click this button here, where it says node editing mode in your edit objects, or you can type the letter N on your keyboard, and that's going to bring you into the node edit mode. And now you can see all the nodes on all of these lines. So now we can cut these on these corners here. You could see right now, if you were to click one of these nodes and move it, both of these lines are attached together. So I'm gonna do Control Z to undo that. If you right click on this node and come down here to cut vector, now if you click this node and move it, you can see now these are detached. So that's exactly what we wanna do. So I'm gonna do Control Z to move that line back. And now we wanna cut the rest of these corners here. So you can either right click and click cut vector but you can also see the shortcut is the letter C. So I'm gonna do cut vector here. On this side, if you hover over the point you wanna cut and type the letter C, that's going to cut that vector right there where you want it. And then we're gonna select this one here, do the same thing, hover over this point and type the letter C, and that cuts the vector. Now we can exit the node editing mode by pressing the letter N again. And now we're back to our selection mode. And now you could see these two slots are now disconnected from the outer shape. So you can see we can ac actually move these away from the shape. So I'm gonna do Control Z to move those back. Now this allows us to adjust the height of these. So to adjust the height, we're gonna do the same thing like we did with the rectangle. We're gonna type the letter T on our keyboard. That's going to bring us into the set size form here. And now we can adjust the height of our slot there. So once again, I'm going to unlink my X and Y, so we're only adjusting the height. And in this case, you can set your anchor point wherever you like. Let's say for an example, we wanted to keep the top edge where it's at. So we're gonna anchor off of the top point up here. And since we're only adjusting the height, it doesn't matter which top point you use. If you're adjusting the width as well, you wanna set the top point on the same edge as the outer shape. So in this case, it'd be top right. And if you would adjust this side, it would be top left. But like I said, we're only adjusting the height. So as long as we have one of these top points selected, it's only gonna adjust the bottom edge. 
So let's go over here. We're going to type in our height that we measured with our curve tool, which is 0 0.199. And let's click apply. And now you can see that kept the top edge where it's at and the bottom edge moved up to adjust for the new height. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. Select our slot, go to our height. And like I said, if you were to adjust the width as well, we'd move our anchor point to the left. But since we're only adjusting the height, we can keep it there on the right as long as it's at the top edge. So for our height, we're gonna type in 0 0.199 and click apply. And there you go, now both of our slots are adjusted to the exact size that we wanted. So let's click close. And now we can zoom in here and you can see since we kept the top edge where it was at, we're still touching our line there, but they're not connected. But down here, since we adjusted the height, there's now a gap here. So now we wanna connect these all back together. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to draw a selection box around all of our shapes there to select everything. And I'm going to type the letter N to go into our node editing mode. Now I'm going to zoom back into here and I'm going to select this node on the outer shape and I'm going to drag it until it snaps to that node there. Now we want to make sure your geometry snap settings are on up at the top here so they will snap together. And now let's zoom out and we'll do the same thing over here. We're just going to click and drag until it snaps together. And now we're going to zoom out again. And now you can see it looks like everything is all connected together. But if we exit our node editing mode by pressing the letter N on our keyboard, and we deselect everything, and we were to select these shapes, you can see they're still disconnected. So right now these would be considered open vectors. So now we have to close these all together. So to do that, I'm going to draw a selection box to select everything again. And we want to come over here to our edit objects. At the bottom here, there's this join tool. You can also access this by typing the letter J on your keyboard. So I'm going to select that. And you can see right now we have zero closed vectors and we have four open vectors selected. After we click the join button, we're going to have one closed vector and zero open. So that's exactly what we want to do. So let's click join. And now let's click close. And now when you select one of these shapes, you can see everything is selected because now it's all joined together. So we zoom out here and now we have our adjusted slots to fit perfectly with our material thickness. And now I'll show you how you can add additional slots if you like to add an additional slot. So we're going to use our rectangle tool. So right up here to draw a rectangle. And we're going to type in the width and the height that we want this rectangle to be. So for our width, Let's say for an example, we wanted it three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna type in 0 0.75. And for our height, we want it the same height as our measured material with our curve tool. So I'm gonna to type in 0 0.199. And now I'm just gonna click about where I want it. So I'm just gonna click over here. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click close. And now I want the right side of this rectangle to be aligned with our outer shape here. So to do that, we're gonna first select our rectangle and then hold the shift key and select our outer shape there. And now we're gonna come up here to our transform objects. We're gonna to go to align selected objects. And here where it says align to selection, we wanna to go to the inside edge and we wanna to go to the right edge. So we're gonna select this button here and you can see that aligns to the right edge there. And we can also center this vertically inside of our outer shape there if we wanted to. So we can come up here to the line selection again. We wanna to go to the center and we want to do it vertically. So we're going to click this button right here. And now that aligns centered vertically into our outer shape there. So now let's click close. And now we just have to connect this to the outer shape. So to do that, I'm going to deselect everything here by clicking away. And I'm going to double click on a rectangle here. That's going to bring it into the transform mode where we can scale this by dragging these handles. So I want to select this center right side here and I'm gonna click and drag that anywhere past our outer shape there. Doesn't matter how far, just as long as it goes past the line there. And now we have a few different options how we can join these together. We can either use the scissor tool and cut away the overlap there. Another way we can do that, which is a little bit easier, is if you select your outer shape first and then hold the shift key and select your rectangle second. It's important the order you select that in. So do the outer shape first and then the rectangle and then come over here to your edit objects. And we wanna click this subtract tool here. And you can see once we click that, 
it automatically erased the overlap there and it also automatically connected everything together. So if we deselect and were to select the slot we just added, you can see now it's connected to everything. So that is how to adjust rectangles and slots to fit your material using your curve tool. So once you adjust all this, you can export this into whatever software you use to create your toolpath for your laser. Or if you have a newer version of Vetric and you have the additional laser module, we can switch over to our toolpath tab. You can see over here we have the laser toolpath over here. This is an additional add-on option and this allows you to create laser toolpaths with your Vetric software. So to create those toolpaths, we would select this laser cut and fill and we would select all the objects that we want to cut and then you would select your laser and set your power and speed and number of passes. In this video, I'm not going to recommend any settings for this because everybody's machine is different. But down here, the next option we would have is if we want to cut outside, inside, or on the line. And in this case, since we use our curve tool to measure our material thickness, we want to make sure we cut on the line. That's very important because if you set to inside or outside, your part is either going to be too loose or too tight. But that also depends on how your curve tool was cut out. So when you cut your curve tool out, generally you cut on the line because that's how most laser softwares cut is on the line. But Vetric added this option to cut either outside of the line or inside of the line, but that accounts for your curve width. So with lasers, it's a little bit difficult to measure the exact curve thickness, but to make sure your parts fit perfectly, you wanna set this option up to whatever method you use to cut your curve tool. So generally you wanna do on the line. But like I said, that can vary, so make sure you do some test cuts before you do a finished project. So once you have all your settings all set up, you want to select a post processor, and then you're ready to save your toolpath to a file. But like I said, you can also select all your objects here and go to File, and then Export, and you can export this as an SVG file, and then you can import that into an external software that you use to create your toolpath for your laser.